Here is an exact problem, and I'm going to solve it. So in this problem, we have two pucks. I label them puck A and puck B. And so puck A starts off in, in a frictionless ice rink, whatever you want to call it, uh, moving towards puck B with a velocity of 0.45 meters per second in the, in the X direction. I, do, I want to write it as a vector. It collides and then deflects off with a new speed of 0.39 meters per second at an angle of 37 degrees. What is the magnet, the velocity and angle for puck B? Okay, uh, so the mass MA is equal to MB, and we'll just call that M. They're the same mass. So this is a momentum, conservation momentum problem. If I take the system of puck A plus puck B, then there is a gravitational force acting on them, but there's also an upwards normal force. So and those two cancel. So the only net, there's no net force on the system. If F net is zero, which it is, then delta P total is equal to zero. And those are vectors. Okay, that's just the formal way of saying conservation momentum. Is kinetic energy conserved? Nobody knows, because I don't know if it's an elastic collision or not. But if there's no external forces, then the momentum is conserved. So let's write down this conservation momentum equation as final initial momentum is equal to final. So I'm going to say PA1 plus PB1 equals PA2 plus PB2. So PA1 is momentum of puck A before the collision. PA2 is the momentum after the collision. Those are all vectors. Now, we do have some simplification here because PB1 is zero. It starts at rest, but that's fine. So now, I don't want to deal with this vector equation even though you can. It's not too bad. Instead, I'm going to write this as two scalar equations. PA1x plus PB1x equals P A two X plus P B two X and P A one Y plus P B one Y equals P A two Y plus P B two Y. That looks complicated, but it's really not too bad. Okay. So let's just go ahead and put in our values. I'm gonna I'm gonna save my values up here to the end. Uh, I have, I'm going to call VA1 the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity, uh, and theta A and theta B and so forth. Uh, so the first thing is that both of these are zero because it's at rest. So that means that this one becomes M VA1. It's in the X direction, and that's it. And over here, what's the X velocity of A? If I just draw A like this, like that, then this is my y velocity, v a y at one two y, and this is v a two x. So that's the adjacent side of this triangle. This is v a two. So I can say v a two x is v a two cosine theta. So it's going to be v equals m v a two cosine theta a, right? Because that's the angle for a plus m v b2 cosine theta b, right? Because that's theta b. There's an equation. It's a lovely equation. Uh, now I'll do the same thing over here. This is actually easier, right? Because what's the y momentum in before the collision? Well, it's not moving in the y direction. It's moving horizontally. So that's 0, 2. So I have 0 equals P A two Y, which is going to be M V A two. Now I'm going to need to use this side, so it's going to be the sine sine of theta A minus M V B two sine theta B. Why is that minus? Well, if this is my positive x direction, this has a negative y component. It's moving in the negative y direction, which has to be true, right? This momentum plus that one has to be zero, then one of them has to be negative. Okay, let's do this thing first. I'm going to change colors here just because I can. 
So you'll notice that each term here has a mass. So if I divide both sides by the mass, it cancels. Now that only works if these two are the same mass, which it is in this case. Same thing over here. I can divide by the mass, divide by the mass, divide by the mass, cancel, cancel, 0 over m is 0. So now I have two things, right? I have two equations, and there are two things I don't know. I don't know theta b, I don't know vb2, but I do know everything else. So let's take, if I have two equations, two unknowns, I want to take one equation, solve it for variable, plug it in over there. And I, I, you could put in numbers here. I could go ahead and put in numbers for these things if, if you want to make that easier. I don't like to make things easier. I like to make things hard. Okay, so let me rewrite these two equations right here, and then we'll solve them. And this way, they'll work for any numbers uh, if you have different numbers. So I have VA1 equals VA2 cosine theta A. All of those are known numbers, right? Plus VB2, don't know that. Cosine theta B, don't know that. And then my other one was 0 equals VA2 sine theta A minus VB2 sine theta B. And I don't know these two things. So let's solve this for VB2 because it's pretty easy. I can add this term to both sides. I get VB2 sine theta B equals VA2 sine theta A. Now I can divide both sides by sine theta B and I get VB2 equals VA2 sine theta A uh, over sine theta b. Now I can plug this in up here for my term right there. So if I do that, I get VA1 equals VA2 cosine theta a plus, instead of VB2, I'm going to put this thing in. So it's VA2 sine theta a I'm going to leave the sine, I'm going to pull this over here. I have cosine theta b over sine theta b. Because now I can use a substitution, right? Sine over cosine is tangent. So this is 1 over tangent. So let's, let's write that because that's a variable, right? That's my only variable in this whole thing. I know that, I know that, I know that, I know that, I know. That's the only thing I don't know. So let's solve for theta that way. So this is going to be equal to VA1 equals VA2. 2 cosine theta a plus va2 all these are numbers sine theta a times 1 over tangent of theta b let's subtract this from both sides so i get va1 minus va2 cosine theta a equals va2 sine theta a 1 over tangent theta b. So I'm going to now, I hate to do this, but I'm going to multiply both sides by tangent theta and divide by that, and I'll get an expression for tangent of theta. Let's just do it on a new piece of paper. There's no reason to scrunch it all in there, right? Okay, so if I do that, I get tangent theta b equals va2 sine theta, oh, that's an a theta a over VA1 minus VA2 cosine theta a. Now to find theta, I just take the inverse tangent. Theta b equals tangent inverse of VA2 sine theta a over VA1 minus VA2 cosine theta a. Okay, that looks bad, but it's not so bad. It's really not bad. It's, it's okay. Let's just check, right? So let's make sure, I can't take the inverse tangent of something with units, so this has to have no units. On the top, I have meters per second times a sine. That has no units. And down the below, I have meters per second, meters per second. So it is, the units do cancel. I do get uh, no units here. Uh, let's just go ahead and plug in our values. Uh, so if you remember, I'm going to pull it right there. So I have inverse tangent. 
of VA2, which is 0 0.39. I'm going to leave off the units. Sine of 37 over VA1, 0 0.45, minus uh, 0 0.39 cosine 37. Let's put it in my calculator right there. Can you see that? That's good right there. Okay. On clear. I think I'm in degrees mode yet. So it's degrees right there. Okay. So I'm going to say tangent inverse, second tangent. And now I'm going to say 0.3. No. Tangent inverse 0.39 times sine of 37 close parentheses divided by parentheses 0.45 minus 0.39 times cosine 37 close parentheses close parentheses close parentheses 59.4 59.4 degrees okay now now that I know the angle, I can go back up here. I know, if I know the angle, I can find VB2. So VB2 is VA2 sine theta A over sine theta B. So let's plug that in. So VA2 is 0.39 times sine of 37 divided by sine of 59.4. times sine 37 divided by sine 59.4 parentheses. Did I miss? I didn't put the parentheses there. I don't think it matters. Let's do it again. I didn't. Okay. 0.39 times sine of 37, close parentheses, divided by sine 59.4, close parentheses. I get, that's weird, 0 0.27 degrees? I mean, it's possible. I feel like. I feel like I might have made a mistake, but it was it was if the mistake was down here, I think the rest of the stuff is pretty good. Okay, so there's your your basic collision problem. Now I do want to make another video, and I think I'll do this um, soon. I'll link it down below. But the fun thing over here is to model this in Python because one way I can make this internal collision, uh, and it's kind of hard to set up these angles, but I can get it to work is by having these have a spring between them that pushes them apart. I've done it before, but I'll do it again just because it's fun to see that momentum is conserved, uh, and that's that. Okay. Hope that's helpful.